Well, here we are in a Potiki, where one child in 70 gets rheumatic fever. That's an appalling statistic for a preventable disease that's been eliminated in some Scandinavian countries for over 40 years. Yet paediatrician John Malcolm deals with it every day. I don't make call. It's a disease born of poverty, and as times have become increasingly tough, so the rate of acute rheumatic fever amongst children in our country has climbed dramatically. In recent years it's been Pacific and Maori, but it's the same rate as Pākehā had in the 1930s. The main cause is cold, damp housing and overcrowding. About how many people were living in that house at the time you had it? Or got, what, uh, my people? husband and I, two adults and, and four boys. And about how many bedrooms? And then Three like, bedrooms. Yeah. And was it a situation where it was difficult to heat? Where oh, I, I had to get onto Housing New Zealand about it because he was getting sick and I was getting worried about it. Mm. Um, she was right to be worried. Typically what can start as a sore throat can end up damaging a child's heart. On average, a Māori male will get 12 years less life expectancy than a Māori male without rheumatic heart disease. The medical solution is long and painful. Penicillin injections once a month for 10 years. And it's also unnecessary. Pretty much all we have to do is to make the houses warm and dry, and these kids wouldn't have to suffer. Rheumatic fever is a serious issue not just in Apotiki, but right through the Bay of Plenty. And in Kawara, the Neighbourhood Healthy Homes team, funded by the Bay of Plenty Community Trust, is doing what it can to help residents improve their homes in order to improve their health. The first year that we started the project, it was about um, going in and finding what the problems were um, and, and coming up with solutions that were easy. We don't have a money tree in the back of our <laughs> backyards, unfortunately. We wish we did. So it was about going into homes and showing them low-cost ways that they could uh, maintain their homes and they could you know, solve them. So it's self-empowering. Folk are doing it themselves, pretty it is, much. And that's yeah. what it's about. Mm. And it's also about sharing with your neighbours. Oh, Tell me, what did they do with your house? Well, they did all the wiring and everything. Right. They put the light switches yeah. on. Sh can you show me? Come here, come here, come here. Tell yeah. me what it was like before. Um, it was a mess. And they've done all the bedroom, the light switches, oh. in all the rooms. Right. Insulation is our biggest thing. Yeah. Um, it's something that um, the government's also supporting, so that's something that we can say, hey, look, the government's going to help you out a bit here. You know, let's because that's a major that. issue too, isn't it? People crowd into one room to keep warm in the winter, exactly. don't they? And then you get all the bugs going from one yep, to another. Yeah, and they just spread it all around in one room. Have you got insulation in the Yes, and things? Well, uh, the top and the bottom. Right. Okay. Mm. So Bruce and Joe had um, insulation on the top, eh? The ceiling. Yep, and, yeah, yeah. and the underfloor both done. Next yeah. winter we're going to be really yeah. noticing the difference. Yeah. It's going to be lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I really praise these healthy homes. They went out of their way to help the people that need it. 